Alrighty, let's watch this in full. There's sound. I think Donkey Kong is the best game ever. Donkey Kong sucks. You know something? You suck. Ladies and gentlemen, the volume inside of this bus is astronomical. I think Donkey Kong is the best. All right, all right. So that is your submission for two previous demo reel animations. All right. The main impressions that I have, and I'll bring down the sound a bit, um, is that once we start, there's immediate movement down here, and he moves from there over, and it gets a bit tricky in terms of where to focus. Now, I think Donkey he talks, and that helps, but there's... Like, if you want to make him fidgety, I think this could be something where maybe you start the shot earlier to show him how he is. Then this guy moves and then you calm him down a little bit. And then you have that moment of, you know, imagine this moves first, kind of antsy. Then this guy moves over, starts talking. He kind of stops, he's kind of listening. Then he has this bigger reaction. So we go back to this guy. And then careful... Even though I'm now at the kid's, you know, the focus there, I want to look at what the kid is doing. But then he got this ginormous move on this guy. So I'm going back to this guy. And watch how they are a little bit tied together in terms of their movements, in terms of what they're doing. Some sort of a dance move there. Bring back the sound just for this. Donkey Kong sucks. Sucks. And I think. His reaction is a bit too soon to sucks. I think you can have um, four or five frames later. So you can finish this so he hears it and then he reacts. You know something? You suck. And after that, it's okay because then he moves over, looks, gives us time to move over to the kit. He says his line and then he has his reaction. And then that's the end of that. Broadly speaking... Um, I think in terms of where we're going, where we're looking, that could be that could be helped a bit. I'm not sure you need this. This could be pushed over to the side, maybe some stairs here. Um, just because you got a lot of lines in there that kind of cut into uh, the, just the cleanliness of the silhouette. Again, just in terms of the, the shot, I don't, think, I don't think it's needed. From a technical point of view... There's a lot of stuff going on where um, I see mostly a lot of IK arms and a lot of there's just a lot of movement throughout where it feels very busy. It gets a bit better through there and definitely better through there. The beginning just feels very busy and swimmy and spliny where just things move like very separately where there's a interesting pivot almost in the middle of that wrist breaking that wrist a little bit and then you have a lot of straight lines in those arms it's tricky because i know you want to hold on to this and keep that ik but i see a lot of straight moves sudden stop and then it'll pivot point changes and even this here feels very straight as it goes and then stops then we kind of go back the same way and then we go straight the other way and then watch out there's some very separate moves in terms of what the shoulders are doing with a very strong i know this is like a a reaction but it gets a bit poppy in terms of what that elbow is doing what those arms are doing and then this gets a bit strong in how quickly that chest comes to a rest because it's not extremely cartoony so when you have those mechanics in there it gives it a bit of a harsh feel but the main thing i'm seeing is that like here is he still playing while he says this? Is that the idea? Versus, wait a minute, and then maybe you can do this where he might, watch out for the silhouette too, it gets a bit of a short arm where we could leave this and then that could hold on to the uh, controller while his arm is out here on that, kind of reinforcing that lean, like, wait a minute, I'm gonna stop playing to tell you that you're the one that is not correct here, and so on and so on. Um, that's the other thing, because I feel like we're stuck in this constraint of holding that prop all the time where it's, i like that you have some changes so it's he's not always stuck in this but it just feels like we could push what he's doing with his arms and silhouette wise and just body language wise a bit more and i think this is a bit too relaxed he gets very sleepy in his 
facial poses. It gets a bit better through there. He gets more um, concentrated. And then for the kid, getting broader notes, but there's something really wobbly in his thighs and even the pelvis where I feel like they're really... It's like he is holding himself up in the air so that the butt is not touching the couch and now he's just wobbling things around. That's mainly what I'm seeing here in, in this area. And this feels again, very straight, very IK, which I know legs are, but you know, all that path. And you can see how this is moving and sliding over while the orientation of the foot is the same. Just gets very, like the arcs need to be worked on a bit more if you want to do something fidgety. At the same time, it could just be simplified where he just kind of kicks his legs in and out. And maybe bring that foot out this way so we have a bit of a nicer silhouette than, than the foot aligned with that shin there. Then as you go into this, careful when we have, and a lot of rigs have that where like the, the lids are aligned like this, just like the eyebrows where everything turns into this. And we can, hold on, let me just delete this here. And I think we can counter those eyes a bit so that the lids are a bit straighter and you do the angriness just through the brows. And I think we are a bit high with the lower lids there. Same thing here. See, for me, the lids come out, come in this way versus from there. So watch out. You might have to rotate those eye sockets around. Speaking of IK, you got some intersections here, but this feels very IK because the, the path is very straight there in terms of what the arms are doing. Same thing here. It goes through there and it feels like, A, the silhouette's a bit wonky with forearm, upper arm overlapped. The wrist kind of broken for how much it gets delayed through there. And especially here, broken, get a tangent through there. You, have a, you could have a cleaner, wider arc for a nicer silhouette. But this feels all kind of broken through there where I would bring that elbow lower. And then it almost feels like it's his hand is pushing his face around. I'm not quite sure there. And then same thing with, with the other arm. Like As you go up, it gets very straight pathwise and then straight pathwise up there. Muddy silhouettes, because if you just hit seven in your uh, in your mind without any background there just to just be like this kind of sticks out there versus this gives us a better idea this for sure and again a bit of a broken feel the wrist right through there just quick and then you have very default looking fingers in terms of the spacing like there's, there's not really an appealing hand pose where they could be either more tight or more relaxed depending on emotion there it's okay here i don't mind that gripping the other thing that happens is that when he is like yeah you know what don't get all sucks he could turn around and be more like i want to talk to you and then that way we have a change in posture we get more of the c curve and reverse we can just be more aware of that line of action and everything play to camera this guy is a bit three-quarter that helps it just the silhouette gets a bit wonky in, in the shapes and in that way, he goes, you know what? He could turn, right? He could still have his, his legs, but he could at least turn a little bit. And then, whoa! And then he could really have, uh, you know, his legs over and go like, oh, like, and hold on to this. Like, oh, don't yell at me type of thing. Because if you look at what the legs are doing, see that they're just basically stuck in that forward pose. And I think we can then also play up how... It, He's bigger, heavier, staying where he is, but he still plays with invading the other person's space. Versus this kid can, you know, <clears throat> if you make him fidgety, it could be fidgety in terms of how he kind of moves around and sits differently and stuff like that versus just going, I kill legs with this. But that's my main thing. I feel like there's a lot of um, IK problems and just general posing that I would revise in terms of how to approach the contrast between an adult and a kid and, and how to sit and move. This uh, gets into my, my usual pet peeve of I wouldn't put a character in front of a photo just because it's such a such a um, style clash of what's going on here. In terms of what she's doing, let's go back here, put some volume back. Let me see here. So here, hold on. Where's the sound? My sound is gone on what I just did. That's strange. That's okay. We can watch it without the sound. Oh, because I accidentally hit the uh, speed change. 
Ladies and gentlemen. The There's some moves where Ladies and gentlemen. like this really pops down. It gets a bit fast in how the arm moves and how it comes to a sudden stop. Gentlemen, the volume inside of this bus is astronomical. Okay, just wanted to double check in terms of if I need anything for the side. I'm just going to look at it in terms of animation. Yeah, even like that flip up feels a bit fast. And then watch out, it gets a bit. Gets a bit all with like the upper body and head. I know she has an extra rotation there, but there's something where everything kind of moves as one there. And this feels really broken. How that hand holds the mic. This would be rotated in to hold the mic. Uh, I would love to see any type of reference you have for this, how you got to that pose. So watch out for stuff like that. Sometimes she feels almost off model in terms of how you push the shapes. But the main thing to me is just the fast movements. That feels like timing breaks. And then we kind of pop into a moment. It's kind of an odd moving hold. And then, yeah, it's, it's almost like a little pop. And it's, I don't know if that's an IK arm again there where it kind of holds too much. I'm going to try the silhouette. kind of forearm overlapped with the upper arm so i would either bring this you know you want to break the arm either down or below to see the structure of the arm that gets a bit better in terms of timing but then it gets a bit wavy in terms of what this arm is doing especially with that turn there and then this gets to me again a bit a bit fast it's almost a bit post to pose where just everything moves over I know there's a slight delay on that arm, but as you play this in real time. And this gets a bit too... I know she wants to go out and broad. And it's going to be awesome because it gets a bit twins. But I think what you could do is put in geometry for this pole. Maybe for some of the chairs. And maybe there's another pole here or something. And then you can maybe play a bit more with the set where she could hold on to something. She can lean on something. I think what's happening now is she is just constantly moving. That's my main thing. I know there's some moments where it feels like she's stopping, but like right off the bat, the shot starts and it's hard to focus on what's going on in her face because it's immediately stuff is moving. And all of that is moving until here. So, okay, a little bit of a pause, but then I feel like mm, that's a bit of a harsh, clunky stop to the mechanics. But then back into a bigger move and then I'm distracted by this wavy move here. And then I'm following this arm, and then it's another big move, and then it's another big move, and then that, and that, and with the really big eye dart at the end, switching where she pretty much looks at me. And I think there's just, besides that hold there, it's just constantly, constantly moving where, hold on, let me set uh, timeline limits here, where I feel like we want to work a little bit more on on specific focus moments where she can talk, hold, and maybe play up a bit more with her face, and then go back into some broader acting where you have maybe one or two gestures total, and not something here, something down here, then down here, then upper gesture up there, down again, and then a broad gesture, and then another kind of like a sub gesture, the same of the sub pose there. It's just this constantly, she feels like she's constantly, there's no like build up, she's always there. Right off the bat, we're going into that kind of level. And I feel like we could have a bit more contrast in terms of what she's doing, where the accents are. And again, maybe play up where she is and use the set. You just kind of, again, replicate that with some simple shapes. Or, you know, or she, she, you put her in a different environment. But visually, I would not have her um, over a photo. And I know you say bus. <laughs> it's going to say maybe she could be somewhere else, but she does say bus. It's astronomical. Because the other thing that you could do, I know this is more work, but imagine we could stage it where it's a, we're a bit flatter, maybe. But again, you put this as a CG model and then you have people here and you don't have to really animate them. But I think it could be really fun to like, they're just trying not to look at her. Like someone's really loud in this and maybe she could have you know something with some speakers in here like it's like you know push this in terms of i love performing in a bus i got my speakers around me i love to sing maybe she has a backpack with speakers kind of really you know stylize this 
And all of these are kind of, maybe there's on the phone or there's kind of looking down like, I don't want to talk to this person, that's weird. And then you can have something where if person is here, she would lean over to talk into that character's face and then turn around and, you know, there's another character and then she could lean in there. So she, you have a broader movements of what the body is doing, some fun interactions with them. And again, they're just kind of, they're just kind of there looking down. That way you don't have to do too much animation. And then at the end, you bring one broad thing of, Oh, astronomical. And, you know, she has her, her big singing moments type of thing in terms of the posing. And I would kind of play with that since you're saying these were demo real animations. Like this feels a bit simple of character centered over photo and that's it. Where I feel like, okay, well, we place them in a bus. What else is in a bus? Well, you got the driver. The driver could complain and look back. You got passengers. What could we do with them? Um, what happens if you put, you know, this the personality of this character then you got the situation of where that character is in a bus, potentially with other people. So then what is the result of uh, a big, boisterous, but happy and like excited person, maybe in the middle of a bus with lots of people who are just who don't want that attention? Then what happens? And then you can see a kind of interaction between all these characters. And that could be more interesting. Like that's what I will push uh, in terms of it being a, a demo real piece. But that's just me. This was a lot more work. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave it at that. You tell me what you want to do with this, how far you want to push this. Um, and that's it, right? Thanks. All right. There's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right. Thank you.